Uh, so I'll do that in an exa a numerical example, but, but the, I the proof just goes the same way, general proof. Uh, just a little bit uh, easier to do it with numbers, maybe. Uh, so let's assume that we have a stock which costs $100 today. And we know that it's going to pay one dividend in the next six months, and that dividend is going to be, well, I I in the next year, there's going to be only one dividend paid, and it's going to be $5.65 paid in six months. Okay? And the, the, we also know that the one year continues, the compound interest rate is 10%. The, this, this is very high for today's market environment, but let's say it's 10%. And the, we also know the six-month continuous annualized uh, rate is 7.41%. Right? And then we can compute, using the formula from the previous slide, what the price of the one-year forward contract should be on, on this stock. Okay? Uh, so I have to multiply by the one-year factor how much one dollar will be in one year by my assumption it's 10 percent interest rate so it's going to be exponential function to the 0 0.1 to 10 percent and then here i have to have the stock price minus the present value of the dividends the stock price today is 100 uh, dividends is 565 well this is going to be paid in six months so the present value i obtain by discounting by the six month rate so it's e to the minus 0 0.0741 except this is annualized rate so i have to divide by two because six months is a one half of a year okay so it's times one half uh, 7.41 percent times one half so this is my discounting factor for six month payment of 565 dollars okay. use that formula from the previous slide and i get uh, 104 dollars and 50 cents as the no arbitrage price for this forward contract in this market environment. Okay. So, so I, I'm going to just show that one case that there is arbitrage, let's say that the, the, the price is cheaper than this, for example, let's take the price to be 104. Okay. So, so that means that the forward contract is, is cheap, uh, uh, relative to what uh, my formula, ther theoretical formula, tells me. Uh, so it means I should uh, go long, I should buy the forward contract, go long in the forward contract, uh, and sell the underlying. So let's do that. It's a pretty much the same proof as before, except I have to worry uh, about the dividends. Uh, let's see how that goes. So at small t today, I go long in the forward, as I said, because it looks cheap. Go long the forward, I sell short one share. Okay, here's the, here's the difference. If I sell short one share of the stock, and that stock pays dividends, I have to pay the dividends to the holder of the stock. Okay? When you're selling uh, a stock, you're selling all the rights that go with the stock, including the right to receive dividends. So. Uh, so when you sell one share, uh, short or, or otherwise, if you sell one share of the stock, uh, you, you, you need also to pay the dividends. Uh, to, so so you have to deliver the dividends when, when they come. So, so I, I, want to, I want to cancel that. I want to have enough money to, to, to do that uh, in six months. I know it's going to be 565. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to buy the six-month bond uh, in an amount which will, which will, uh, which is the present value of 565, so that I have exactly 565 in, in six months. Okay? So since the the six-month rate annualized is 7.41 percent, I'm using the same discount factor here, like here. Right? So I'm discounting 565 by the six month factor rate and I get something which is 5.4445. Uh, so this is how much I will invest in the six month bond. Okay? I, I pay six month the, the six month bond, zero coupon, six month bond in this amount. Okay? Uh, 
That means that in six months I will have five, that bond will deliver to me 565, which is what I want, and I will use that to pay the dividends. Okay. So I, 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 ha I still have selling one share, I got $100, I pay 5,4445 to buy this six month bond. So I have extra money, I put that money in the bank, uh, well, in the one year bond, let's say. Uh, no, what, whatever it is, but at the rate of 10%. So I put 100 minus 5, 4, 4, 4, 5 uh, in the remaining amount. So money that I have, 94.5555 in, in, let's say, in the one-year bond. Okay, so I already told you what's going to happen in six months. In six months, uh, I will have to pay the dividend of 565, but I will receive 565 from my position in the six-month bond. That's exactly how I constructed that position to have 565 in six months. Okay. At one year from today, uh, which is capital T, uh, I will receive, that goes with 10%, my, my one-year bond, I invested 94.555 into that bond, that's going to go up to that times e to the point 0.1, which you can compute is exa exactly 104.5. Okay. That's going to be exactly 104.5. Uh, <coughs> But I only have to pay, so I will have 104.5 in the bank or the bond, but I only have to pay 104 okay? uh, uh, in the forward contract. In the forward contract, I get my one share. I can, clo I can deliver that share to close, to cover my short position and close it. And I still have the difference of 50 cents as profit. And if I, instead of doing this for one, forward and one share, do it for 1,000 forwards and 1,000 shares, then I have 0.5 times 1,000, whatever I can do. Right? So this is, this is my ar arbitrage profit, uh, the same logic as without dividends, you just have to make sure that in your arbitrage strategy you have enough money to pay the dividends when you are short the underlying. Alright, so that's that. Let's move next. So here is an example that uh, that I told you was uh, that there was going to be an example which is kind of similar to dividends. It's a for it's a it's a very much used type of, of forward contract, although it's usually futures. We'll talk about futures soon. Um, forward contract on foreign currency. So it, it's, a, it's a contract in which you know you will need uh, one euro and, 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 and you, you, you have a pre-specified uh, exchange rate in the forward contract so that you can buy that euro uh, in, in, in whatever number of months for, for that amount. Okay, so I'm going here to use the si same notation. I'm going to use S of T to denote the current price in dollars of one euro, euro let's say, or one unit of the, f of the foreign currency. So S of T is actually the exchange rate, right? It's how many dollars I have to pay today for uh, one unit of the foreign currency. Uh, so it's the exchange rate, I'm using the notation S, which, which is usually for stock, just to keep the notation same, but it's, it's the exchange rate. I'm going to have two risk-free rates here, I'm going to denote by RF the foreign risk-free risk -free rate and by R the domestic risk-free rate. Let's say continuous compounding, just to be specific. Okay. So he, he, here is the intuition of what I'm, um, what I'm going to do here. Uh, I'm going to think of the foreign currency as a risky asset. It's it's like a stock. Or it's it's something risk from the point of view of the of the dollar investor. A euro is a risky asset. Okay? It's fluctuating in a risky way. You cannot predict what it's going to do. So from the point of view of the dollar investor, uh, uh, the foreign currency, the uh, euro, is is risky. Uh, but but it's an asset which pays dividends because if you hold euro, you get in in a euro bank you will get RF, you will get the interest, you will get some interest on that euro. So it's really like a risky asset which pays dividends at the continuous rate. Here I assumed continuous compounding. So, so it's, really, it's really like an asset that pays continuously compounded dividends. Yeah, which really means that uh, it should be the same formula as the one from two slides ago, uh, uh, this one for dividends. 
uh, for an asset which pays continuously compounded dividends. Uh, uh, so instead, but instead of Q, instead of Q, I should have RF. I should have the uh, risk-free foreign rate. And then this is going to be e in with the continuously compounding domestic rate. This is just going to be e to the r t minus t, right? So I'm going to have e to the r t minus t times e to the minus r f t minus t. That's that's intuitively what should happen, and that's what I'm claiming here. Two slides next. That that's exactly what's happening. That the forward price should be equal to the e to the r t minus t times e to the minus rf t minus t where rf is discounting like by, by the dividend rate but by the dividend rate here is the the interest rate on euro okay? when i do the multiplication i get e to the r minus rf t minus t times the today's price of uh, today's exchange rate all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna just show one side uh, for example if the forward is cheap relatively speaking so if f of t uh, let's assume that f of t is strictly less than this product i want i want to show that there is going to be you can construct arbitrage okay? again the forward looks cheap the the underlying which is euro uh, looks uh, uh, expensive so i'm going to go today long in the forward contract on euro I want to sell short the underlying asset. Well, selling euro is borrowing. Okay, selling short is really like you borrow the stock and then you sell it. So selling short euro uh, is just means borrowing. Yeah. So I'm going to borrow euro, um, but uh, here I'm, I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful. I'm not going to borrow one unit of euro because in the forward contract I will receive. I will see one euro yeah, at capital T for the price f of t. Uh, so I, I want I want to borrow that many units of euro so that I actually have to pay one euro at maturity to the foreign bank, um, or whether it's in foreign bank or, or uh, exchange to dollars doesn't matter. But but I want I I'm going to borrow. Uh, this many discounted one euro by the, the by the risk free rate discounted. I'm gonna uh, di borrow discounted uh, one euro so that it, it will it will go to one euro um, by by capital T. Okay. So uh, if I <coughs> if I do that uh, and uh, and uh, and I can invest its its value in dollars. Uh, uh, which is just multiplying this by the exchange rate today into into the uh, so I can uh, put that into the uh, domestic bank uh, at rate R. Okay, that's what I do. All right. So let's see what happens what happens uh, at maturity. Well, at maturity, this thing in the in the U.S. bank would go up by the factor e to the r t minus t because it's in the US bank at this interest rate. So I will have this much uh, in, in dollars. And that was by assumption more than what I have to pay in the forward contract. Okay. So I will have more than enough money to pay the forward price for the euro. I will get my euro. Uh, what do I do with that euro? Well, that's the euro that I borrowed here and I have to return. Okay, I borrowed less than euro, I borrowed discounted euro, but now it's going to be uh, exactly one euro what I have to pay back. So I'm going to receive that euro from my forward contract. I, I effectively close the short position in euro in the, in the European bank. I give back that euro. And then, then I have zero uh, balance in the European bank, uh, and uh, and I still have this extra money that uh, dollars I had. Uh, uh, I had uh, sorry here. I had more dollars than I needed to pay in the forward contract. Okay. So arbitrage, yeah. and uh, I'm leaving to you as an exercise to to the do the uh, other case, if if it's strictly less. If this product is strictly less than the forward price of the euro, 
you would do exactly opposite positions. You would go shoulder forward and you, you would uh, you would deposit uh, money in the euro bank. Okay, so uh, I'll leave that to you. All right. So we now have a version of the of the forward price uh, on a, on foreign currency. Uh, here, re assuming that the continuously compounded interest rate, but there are there are similar formulas if the interest rate is compounded in in, in a different way.